Okay, good afternoon, good morning, uh, maybe even good evening wherever you are. Welcome to uh, uh, We're Back, a T News T Learn webinar where we uh, spend 35 40 minutes learning about a particular subject. Um, this one is titled How to Win Direct Bookings from Data if you're a hotel. So let's do a little bit of a preamble first. So, you know, in the over complex world of uh, consumer big data, there are infinite possibilities for the travel and hospitality industries. That's something that we all know. You know, independent hoteliers have arguably though not embraced the full tech and strategic potential of traveler data. Now, obviously hoteliers uh, are busy making their guests happy. That's their job. That's what they're very, very good at most of them. You know, they're filling their rooms. They're keeping up with tech innovations, but at the same time, they are missing arguably unparalleled opportunities to win more direct bookings. So what we're going to do, as I say, over the next uh, 35 minutes or so is hear from our uh, partner on this particular TLUM webinar, and that is Travago. Everyone knows Travago. It's the, uh, uh, the hotel website. Um, grown extraordinarily big in a short time so uh, uh, that's why I guess everybody seems to know about them so well done to Travago for that so um, but that's who we'll be hearing from today so just a little bit about uh, us so I'm Kevin May I'm the senior editor and your moderator today behind the scenes pressing the buttons and twiddling the knobs is Linda Fox she's our uh, deputy editor and she's our producer for this um, and from Travago we have Ali Thompson who is the um, the industry manager uh, for the UK and Ireland. So before I hand over to Ali, uh, just a few reminders. So um, we will be recording everything that you can hear today. That recording and everything that you see in terms of the presentation will be on tnews.com basically as soon as I can get it up there. It will probably be later on this evening uh, UK time. So, And you will also be sent a link to that in case you don't see it on the site so that you can then share that link around your colleagues and your friends and your enemies and remind them what a great time you had and how much you learned. Um, we won't have an awful lot of time, but we may have some time at the end for a quick discussion with Ali. So if you have um, any questions at all that you would like her to answer based on what you've um, been hearing today, then please feel free to send in those questions um, using there's a questions button that is on the right hand side of your screen as you look at it on the go to webinar dashboard so you can hit your questions there we will try to get to some of them but don't worry we will also make a recording of everything that you hear uh, or sorry everything that you send in in terms of a question and we'll send that to the the guys and the girls at Travago and they will get back to you with an answer uh, at some point in the next few days depending on how many questions we get in we've had lots of you have registered today which has been absolutely terrific so we're thrilled with that um and as i say we'll uh, we'll be getting back to you with those questions uh, as we can so that's enough from me i will now hand over to uh, ali and the floor is now yours uh, to take us through thank you kevin hi everyone uh ali here i'm just going to go back to the original slide thanks for the introduction um i think i speak for the whole travago team when i say that it's really a pleasure to join you for this tea learn today it's been great to see so much interest in the topic and also that there's so many people joining us this afternoon or morning or evening, wherever you are. In my role as the industry manager for the UK and Ireland, I'm part of a wider industry management team and we're responsible for raising awareness among hoteliers of the benefits of meta search marketing. To have an understanding of meta search marketing requires first a strong foundation of knowledge about the wider online marketing and distribution space. So we focus a lot of our efforts in this area as well. Today, as you know, we're looking at how hotels can make use of data to bring more direct bookings. Now, before I go any further, I want to acknowledge something that some of you may have picked up on already, and that's my accent. Um, <laughs> I only bring it up because in the next 30 minutes, I will say the word data a lot. But in New Zealand, where I'm from, we actually pronounce this word data. Now, I promise you, I've tried to retrain myself to say data, and I've set myself a personal challenge not to make any slip ups. But in case you hear the sneaky data pop in there once in a while, then you'll understand why. So let's crack on. Um, I'm going to start by introducing Travago in a little more detail. So you can appreciate why as a company, we're well placed to discuss data analysis. Travago is a leading global hotel meta search and we're a data driven company. That means that every decision we make is based on detailed analysis of data. This is reflected internally with one of our core values, which we call the power of proof. 
In terms of Travago, Travago data, we record every user action on our website. So that comes from travellers searching for and comparing over 1.3 million hotels in 190 countries. When they're comparing hotel rates, they're comparing them from more than 200 different booking sites. And in terms of volume, we're gathering data from 1.4 billion visits per year. Our mission at Travago is to provide travellers a simple, unbiased and transparent search experience that helps them find their ideal hotel easily. We do this by turning to the data to spot trends and to anticipate what travellers want. To achieve this mission and to deliver the best service to travellers, it's important that our websites are tailored to the travellers, depending on where they come from and the language they speak. This is why Travago operates 55, 55 localised websites worldwide in 33 languages. So now you have a glimpse of Travago. Let's take a look at the bigger picture for data and travel. The first question you might be asking is, why data? The simple answer is, decisions based on data are more reliable than decisions based on intuition. A lot of the time in business, particularly in marketing and advertising, there is a tendency to make decisions based on instinct and gut feeling. This is perfectly understandable because as individuals, we all live in our little bubbles composed of bias assumptions, emotions, and instincts. If the gut feeling happens to be right, you might see successful results, but what if it's wrong? One decision based on instincts could, cost you, could cause your business to fail or at the very least cause you to pour money down the drain. This is no less true for the hotel industry than it is for any other. In addition, in the hotel industry, you need to make important decisions really quickly while being extremely busy with everything involved in running a hotel. The good news is that when you incorporate data, not only are decisions more reliable, they can be made faster, but you also have the challenge of knowing how, which data to use and how to act on it. Today, we want to try and find some clarity to this topic by looking at some key challenges with data and the areas you should consider for making decisions in your business and in your marketing. So let's start with the online traveler's digital footprint. To understand how much data, uh, sorry, travel data is produced, we need to understand the number of people making trips and in the process, searching and booking online. Data from the World Tourism Organization tells us that more than 1.2 billion people traveled across the globe in 2016. That's 51 million people more than in 2015. That increase is even more impressive when you take into account threats to international tourism in previous years. If you had turned to your intuition about what these threats to tourism might have caused, you may have assumed the opposite scenario, or at least that travel had uh, plateaued. The number of people traveling equates to around 3.3 million check-ins every day, each creating data at every step of the journey. Focusrite predicted that online penetration in global travel would reach 43% in 2016, which means a huge amount of traveler data is left in a digital footprint. It is that very digital footprint that you can look to to anticipate what travellers want and when they want it. But as I said, there are some challenges to working with data. At this point, it's important to note that the working with data is only valuable when you structure it and make it actionable. There are three major challenges that you need to overcome and they all start with V, so we call it the V factor. The first V stands for volume. Volume is all about how much data you need in order to draw reliable conclusions and in turn have the technical capacity to analyze and store that data. This is where big data-driven companies like Travago are a step ahead of everyone else. We have a huge volume of data at our disposal and we have sophisticated machines to process it. The second V is velocity. The challenge of velocity is working out how often to update the data depending on variance and trends over time. And finally, you have variety, which is all about the types of data. You need, to, you need data from multiple sources to have a global overview of trends and to analyze specific market situations. This data can come in different forms. It could be Excel tables, it could be photos, videos, emails, a whole lot more things. Now for an individual hotel to overcome the V factor by collating data independently is a really difficult task. So rather than try to reinvent the wheel, turn to the sources that have already overcome the V-factor. These are travel companies and research companies delivering data in the volume, velocity, and variety that can help you make informed decisions in your hotel. To help you identify which sources you should turn to, ask yourself this question. 
do you know where travellers start searching for a hotel? Now, although you can learn a lot about analysing the guests who have already stayed at your hotel, the more important ones to analyse are those who found you but didn't book with you. These are the guests you're missing out on, and to find them, you need to know where they start searching for their hotel, so you can in turn find out where to seek the data. Here on the screen, you can see the search and booking journey, and the websites that travellers interact with at each stage of this journey. What is not shown here is your hotel website, and for direct bookings, this is obviously what you want to change. Travago, as a meta search, covers the inspiration, search, and comparison stages. In a 2015 study, Focusrite asked travellers across eight key markets which travel websites or apps they use to shop for hotels and accommodation. More than one out of every two guests responded that they use MetaSearch, and in several of the markets, that number reached between 70 and 85%. Considering where you should seek the data, the search and comparison phases are where the, the largest amount of data is produced, because not everyone who is searching books a hotel in the end. If you only analyse data collected in the booking stages, is you exclude insights such as which channel visitors come from, and with the V factor in mind, this is an example of the variety of data you should consider. Making use of data to win more direct bookings is actually all about your online marketing strategy. You need to base your marketing strategy on data to position your hotel appropriately and to optimise your hotel's online presence. I mentioned already that working with data is only valuable when you structure it and make it actionable. So to do this, you need to collect and structure data around three key pillars. The three key pillars that you should build your marketing strategy around are the destination your hotel is located in, the guest who is searching for your hotel or hotels like yours, and finally, your hotel competitors. So we're going to look first at the destination. I'll ask a question here. Do you know the value of your location as a destination? This is a question about how many people want to travel your, to your destination and what they're prepared to pay for their hotel when they stay there. To go back to the concept of making decisions through instincts versus data, let's look at the example of events. Events can boost the number of visitors to your location and be a big revenue opportunity. Instincts will tell you that the bigger the event, the bigger the opportunity, but it's actually not quite that simple. Take this example that we came across just last month for two events in the US that took place on the same weekend, Groundhog Day and the Super Bowl. I'm pretty sure if I asked everybody listening that they would have heard, they would say yes if I asked if you'd heard of the Super Bowl. But unless you're from the United States, you might not be aware of Groundhog Day. It takes place on the 2nd of February and is the day when the groundhog supposedly emerges from his burrow and depending on his actions, folklore says you can predict whether spring will arrive early or whether winter will continue. Pretty cute and wacky story if you ask me and if you want to know more you can look it up, there's a great page on Wikipedia. Now this comparison of Super Bowl, Super Bowl and Groundhog Day is a story of supply and demand. Super Bowl is the biggest sporting event on the US calendar, drawing upwards of 110 million TV viewers and up to 1 million people in crowds flocking to the game itself and surrounding events, which creates huge demand for the hosting city. This year was in Houston. On the other hand, Groundhog Day events are held in multiple locations, which are mostly small towns in Pennsylvania. Punxsutawney, where our example takes place, say that time, 10 times fast, <laughs> is the biggest event, which usually draws around 40,000 attendees. Now obviously a crowd of 40,000 pales in comparison to 1 million, so you might think that the better opportunity value as a hotel that weekend was in Houston, right? But the difference here is in the supply. Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania has only three hotels and a handful of bed and breakfasts, while there are more than 7,000 hotel rooms in Houston. So what do we know about the reality of the situation? We looked at the average hotel rates over that weekend, and we found that the relationship between supply and demand in Punxsutawney presented a higher opportunity value, and hoteliers were able to capitalise on it with increased prices. It worked out to be $110 more expensive to stay there over the Super Bowl weekend than it was to stay in Houston for Super Bowl. Not only that, the regular room rate in Punxsutawney is just $130 on average, so Groundhog Day was a huge revenue increase for them. We use this example because by monitoring search volumes and understanding the supply of hotel rooms in your destination, you can actually predict demand. 
When demand for your area is high, or even exceeds the supply available, this is the opportunity to implement a competitive pricing strategy. Because search volumes reflect the future, they are an example of the data that you should update as regularly as possible. In an ideal scenario, update them daily. This enables you to make an unbiased pricing decision and respond effectively to developments. Here you can see the prices of two competing hotels and how they develop over a time period. And if you add the search volume data, you can determine the window of opportunity to adjust pricing. To access this kind of data, you need to make use of solutions that show you the volumes of travelers looking for accommodation in your location for particular travel dates. Particularly useful options also show you the dates of events in your area, which enables you to be even more competitive. You can compare search volumes for event dates to those of normal days to evaluate the impact of the event and what you expect the demand to be for hotel accommodation. Big companies record data in near real time and can aggregate this data for hoteliers to access with simple platforms. That brings me to the next pillar. Who is your guest? This might seem like an obvious question and you may even think that it's easy to answer, but understanding your guest is about using data to understand who your potential guests are. That is, the guests who search for your hotel or location but don't actually book because your marketing isn't tailored to capture them. One of the most important things to be aware of is where those travelers are coming from. Take the Balearic Islands, for example, off the coast of Spain in the Mediterranean. For such a small destination, you might assume that these islands are most popular with domestic travelers from mainland Spain. But data tells us that of the 15 million visitors to the Balearic Islands, only 2 million of them come from mainland Spain. The other 13 million are international travelers. This information suggests taking a very simple action. Market your hotel in foreign languages according to where your potential guests are coming from. The first step is to optimize your hotel website, which means you need to have the right tools. For example, is your booking engine available in multiple languages? Some booking engine providers provide translations in-house, so you don't need to invest further in translation services. Language optimization needs to extend beyond your hotel website Site, to all the marketing content you produce online and also to your hotel profile across channels. On Trivago, for example, the first step is to upload an accurate hotel description, which is free. We've checked the numbers and we know that 79% of all clicks on Trivago go to profiles that have a description. So that gives you an idea of how important that information is. Combine data about where guests are coming from with the data about where travelers are seeking the information and make sure your own hotel information is available available in the traveler's native languages on those channels, so they can get the best impression of your hotel at every touch point. If you have limited resources, perhaps there are destination marketing organizations or hotel associations in your area that can support you with this. Going back to the case of the Balearic Islands, 35% of international visitors came from Germany and 28% from the United Kingdom. So the hoteliers there should definitely publish their websites and marketing content in German and English at the very least. Now, once you've decided what languages to focus on, you need to figure out what to say. What you should say about your hotel all comes down to types of travelers who are searching. Excuse me while I just deal with this delay in the presentation. Cool. But understanding who they are, you can predict what motivates them to directly book your hotel instead of another one in your area. Our analysis of travelers searching on Trivago revealed three key traveler types. Vacation travelers who search for trips at least one week long, and they're doing their travel research on weekends. Business travelers who most commonly search for travel dates during the week and predominantly search on Monday mornings. And weekend travelers who search on Thursday and Friday evenings for weekend dates. But when it comes to optimizing your content for different traveler types, what might that actually look like? Here are two hotels in the same location where two big events occur every year at different times. One event attracts weekend travelers while the other attracts business travelers. Both hoteliers know about the events, so let's check out their online profiles to see if they will win bookings. The hotelier at Hotel A has decided to use the same content throughout the year, which he hopes will appeal to the guests for the business event and to the guests going to the summer festival but he hasn't taken any steps to stand out to either of those guests. 
Hotelier at Hotel B, on the other hand, is tracking search volumes according to the dates of the events on a daily basis and can determine when the demand starts to increase for each event. Hotel B, therefore, knows exactly when to grasp the opportunity for each event. When demand increases for the dates of the summer festival, he selects photos and highlights amenities to promote the leisure features of his hotel and announces a special offer for the weekend of the festival. When opportunity knocks for the business event, he adjusts his photos and highlights amenities that are important for business guests and promotes an offer that assists them during their stay for the event. So who do you think will get more bookings in this scenario? This is a rhetorical question, but in any case, I wouldn't possibly leave it to your intuition to decide because we're talking about data. So. We analyzed, an op uh, sorry, we analyzed some optimized profiles on Trivago, which are those that have tailored pictures and active news, just like the ones we described, and found that hotels op with optimized content get an average of 82% more clicks to their hotel website. That means that the more attention your hotel gets for the right reasons, the more opportunities you have to convert those travelers into guests as a direct booking. Therefore, in this scenario, Hotel B wins. Hooray, Hotel B. But there's one thing that this comparison didn't take into account, and that's the rest of the hotels in the area. It's important to frequently check what are your competitors doing. Monitoring your competitors is all about setting competitive pricing. You can easily look at all the hotels in your area and see their prices, but not all of them are necessarily direct competition. So how do you know which ones to focus on? To figure this out, you should first define your unique selling proposition. That is, what's special about your hotel and in what way do you deliver value to your guest? Then you need to understand which hotels in your area offer a similar proposition. These are the ones whose prices matter the most in relation to your prices. To analyze your competitors, you need the same data for their hotels about who the guest is as you need for your own hotel. When the guest profiles match, you know you're directly competing with each other. Ideally, you should seek data about your hotel and your competitors from the same source so that you can be sure you're comparing apples with apples. When you know who your competitors are, look at the details of what they're offering the guests. Are they offering the same thing that you're offering? Do they have a special deal that you can beat? Do they charge the same price as you for something that you actually do better than them? These are the simple ways to identify your most competitive features so you can highlight them and attract guests to book at your hotel instead. In the end, when the unique selling propositions of your hotel and your competitors are very similar, price plays an important role. When it comes to setting your price, ask yourself two questions. Is your rate attractive to the guest? And is it competitive? Go back to your unique selling proposition, the position of your brand and the types of travelers coming to your hotel, what is the price point that fits your hotel best that those travelers will be willing to pay? This is the price that will make your hotel most attractive, but don't just guess. Find data to support your decision. When it comes to whether you're competitive, this is about comparing uh, your price with your competitor's price. We decided to do a short poll for this section to test your intuition against the data. So the question we're going to ask you is, when your price is compared to that of your competitors, what's the sweet spot? What's the difference in price that'll make your hotel most competitive and motivate the traveler to book your hotel? So Kevin, if you'll jump back on now and assist me, I think we can post the question and the options on screen for everybody listening. Right, that's... Okay, so there you have the sweet spot. We're gonna give everybody a, a minute to answer this because we have quite a lot of people online. So your time starts now. <laughs> Right. If Kevin's actually opened up the polling yep. ability. Yep. We're we, working? We're rolling? Yep. Good. We can't, we, it's just you and I that can't see it. Everyone else can see it. So. Awesome. We're just watching the percentage of people that have voted. So once we, uh, and I will ask you actually what you think the, uh, what you think the result you're surprised what I think the result is yeah what do you think the result well was? I I already know what the actual result is so I couldn't possibly sway everyone's opinion by giving them a suggestion <laughs> right okay let's just okay
Okay, let's fire that up now and then share the results. Okay. Okay, right. So we've got a, almost a tie between 5% more expensive and 5% less expensive. I'm quite surprised by that because I think um, I think people mostly assume that to have a competitive price, they have to undercut their competitors, which you know is a logical assumption for for people. What do you think, Kevin? Um, you're the expert, really. <laughs> <laughs> I've never, I've never done anything to do with revenue management. Only written about it, so I, I, it's, it's beyond my knowledge base. But it's interesting that you are slightly surprised. I mean, and, and that's obviously these things are obviously varied by the types of people that are listening in and then have voted. But uh, no, interesting, all the same, right? Let me just hide that poll, yeah. and that should be back to you. Just before you carry on, Ali, I'll remind everybody that we are going to have a few minutes at the end uh, for some questions for Ali. So if you want to uh, uh, ask her a question, you can do so by hitting the question button on the right hand side. We will take a note of all of those anyway, and someone will get back to you. So uh, Ali, that should be back to you now. Alrighty, so obviously we have analysed the traveller behaviour relating to price differences and we found that the result was by offering a price that is just 5% less than that of a competitor. Now, excuse me, the there we go. 5% less of a competitor, you'll see a 50% increase in your booking conversion. So by keeping an eye on your competitors, well done everybody, by the way, who said 5% discount, you win. There's no prize. <laughs> Um, so by keeping an eye on your competitors as well as tracking search volumes like we suggested earlier, you might also realise that you're the only one aware of a search trend which puts you in the best position to boost your occupancy as well as your margin. So we've now reached the part of the presentation where I'll wrap up. So in case it hasn't become clear already, let's go back to the original question. How do you use this data to win more direct bookings? The answer is this. Seek data that is structured around three pillars that you can make actionable in your marketing strategy to ensure your hotel stands out to your target travellers. The three pillars, once again, are the destination of your hotel, the guest who is looking for your destination, and your competitors. Position your hotel and define a unique selling proposition to appeal to the traveller types that are looking for your destination. Set your pricing to match their expectations and tailor your promotions to particular events or seasonality using insights from search volume data. And make sure travellers can engage with your hotel brand in their native language at every opportunity on every channel. In my introduction, I mentioned some statistics about Trivago and that we have a huge amount of data. If you're interested in discovering our data about your hotel, get in touch with us. There's a link that's showing up on the screen just now. So follow that link at any time and there's a contact form you can fill in. We'll let you know how you can access that data. So that brings me now to the end of the presentation. Um, I will hand back over to Kevin and Linda and for any questions that have come up, I think we should have some time. So, but as I'm now here, thanks again for listening. Okay, right. Oh, thank you. Linda. Thank you very much, Ali. Right. Um, the, the questions inevitably are starting to pile in. We'll try and get to some of them when we can. And just to remind you, we will uh, uh, we will take a note of them. So, I mean, this is a broad question that is summarising some of those that have come in. And that is around, you know, if you're an independent hotelier and how it feels to be one of those, if you're trying to do all of this, given that there are some rather large other companies that are doing the same thing. Is it possible as an independent hotelier to just take on board some of the things that you're suggesting? Um, we certainly believe so. Um, as an independent hotelier, yes, you are competing with a lot of OTAs um, and the people that have a lot of uh, impact in the space. But the point is that you, um, you, know, you have all, all of these channels where your brand is uh, presented and you need to take the opportunities across all those channels to position your brand effectively. Um, so this is about using the data to understand where those channels are and then using that data to know what the guests want to know about your hotel and positioning your hotel efficiently so that they can be more encouraged to go to your website and make a direct booking with your hotel. Okay and um, uh, I I'm summarising a couple of these questions into one here. So another one, you, you talked about, you know, getting resources to find out um, search volumes. You said there, uh, your words, there's you know, simple platforms. So can you just kind of identify what some of those platforms might be to, to, to direct people where they can get some of this data from? 
Um, well, certainly I can tell you that uh, at Trivago, so with uh, the hotel manager platform that we um, I just showed on the link before, we do offer this data to to um, hoteliers. Uh -huh. So that's all about, um, you know, part of our goal is to empower the hoteliers to be able to market themselves on MetaSearch. That's, you know, the whole focus of my role. But um, so we do give away, give that data away. Some of it, there is some insights that are actually free with the free solution. And then there's a paid solution which, which gives them more detailed insights. So without going into a pitch, I'd say go to the link and then we can give you some more information <laughs> offline at another time. Of, of course, yeah. And just, I, I suppose <laughs> it's, a, it's a tip really. I mean, if I was a, a 10 room bed and breakfast on the south coast of the UK, and I'm inspired by what you've been telling me today, but it is just me and my partner that run this thing. I mean, how, how do you devote resources within presumably a busy property anyway to do this kind of stuff? I mean, what, what are some of the things that you've heard the hotels doing in order to do this? Well, I mean, devoting time to this kind of thing is actually all about making sure that what you're using to achieve it is you know, simple and, and doesn't actually take too much of your time. So in terms of online marketing, this is where using the data really adds value. If you have data, you don't have to spend a lot of time, you know, trying different things. If you really base a decision on data, you should be fairly certain that it's going to work for you. Um, also, you know, timeliness and, and, and spending time managing all of this also comes down to the technology. We hear about a lot of hotels that are using really old software that's legacy or they've got, you know, five different programs that can be, you know the functions can be achieved with with one modern solution so we really encourage people to to take um you know a look at how they're using technology to make sure that the tools that they're using are really really easy you know they they can have check a guest in with a single click this kind of thing um this is you know really important because that that's the whole goal is being able to capture this online market and and you know make the most of it while still being able to dedicate yourself to hospitality which is all about the guest and actually the reason that most people open hotels in the first place so right of course of course and uh, I was quite surprised when you when you were talking about you know um, creating listings and you said you know a nice plug you know you can have a free description on Trivago <laughs> and things like that I was quite surprised that you're actually encouraging people to do that in other words are hotels still not doing something that sounds so fundamentally basic by putting a description in uh, yeah so, so you know Hotels invariably will have a, a profile on Trivago anyway. Um, we have a range of sources, but the, the best source for content about a hotel is from the hotel itself. The hotels are the one that knows, you know, what they do best, the best things in their area, you know, all of the attractions, this kind of thing. So we really make it accessible for hoteliers to log in and actually give us that information because that helps the traveler understand more about the hotel and that's our ultimate goal. So Right, okay. Yeah, I, I mean yeah, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, you know, in, in terms of whether it's a surprise that hotels aren't using that, I think that's just a case of awareness and that's obviously what we're working to overcome. Right. Okay, and um, sorry, I'm just looking through this list of questions here. I mean, you were, t you was, you were talking about traveller types and you mm -hmm. were saying you have uh, leisure travellers and you can look at their type behaviour and what, you know, their kind of booking behaviour and search behaviour and then you can look at business travellers and their search behaviour and their booking behaviour and when they come in and what they do and all those kind of things. But we're hearing, it's that awful word, pleasure, where you're starting to get this merger <laughs> of the two. So people that are travelling on business and then they tap on a few more days for, for leisure at the end of it and that is apparently a growing trend. So, I mean, how, how, do, you, how do you target it's that type of traveller. I think that's a really tough question. Question. I do agree with you that pleasure is a hideous word, um, <laughs> but I think you know um, if you if you recognise that a lot of people are looking for that. I mean, this this is also coming into the search dates that people look for. I mean, once somebody's booked your hotel, it's pretty obvious that they're a, a pleasure traveller if they've booked for a few days and then they've extended for the weekend as well. Um, so, I mean, that may be the, the best opportunity is then to start saying to them, hey, we noticed you're staying the weekend and, and promoting that content that you have that you would normally use to appeal, appeal to sort of more leisure travellers. Um, in terms of capturing it that at the start on the hotel profile, I mean, the example that we showed of these two hotels is, is very simple and very basic. Actually, we encourage people to add content that, you know, does show all of the different things about their hotel and it's really about the news function that captures these you know specific time frames and this kind of thing so um, you know it is possible to to highlight the, fe the fe features of your hotel to a range of guests um, the example we used was just you know to really compare two profiles that one was doing it and one was wasn't so 
Yeah. Right. Okay. And it's interesting. I mean, there's so much emphasis being put on the things that you do when you're in it. And we're talking about leisure now. There's so much emphasis put on things that you do when you're in a destination, you know, tours and activities, the attractions that you visit. Is there, should, should independent hoteliers or small hoteliers be trying to work closer with their local tourism boards and all this kind of thing? Because presumably organisations like that would have data as well. Absolutely, and I wouldn't just intuitively say yes, they should work with destination organisations. I would say go to those organisations, ask them what data they have, find out you know what audience they can work with, what kind of insights they're going to get, and if they know, if you think that that data will help you make decisions, then by all means work with them. Um, you know. As a sort of anecdotal suggestion, we do say, you know, working with destination marketing organisations or hotel associations, you know, if nothing else, it puts you in a network where you can actually compare, you know, what you're doing with other people and, and discuss things. Um, but certainly there are resources and data that those organisations are collecting that uh, hoteliers should be looking at tapping into. Right. And just just going back to a question that, um, that that came in before related to it, and someone is asking here, you know, do you think it's actually a good idea on a, on a hotel website, for example, which is obviously where you would be sending people to, whether they should create separate pages that presumably that's landing pages for, best, for business and leisure travellers. So you're segmenting them at the point that they come in the door, if you're able to, once you know who they are, I mean, so that you can do that content stuff that you were talking about. I'm not actually an expert on that. The people that I would ask that sort of thing from would be um, the providers of booking engines. So um, we do a lot of research about the landing page itself and the usability and how it should be really simple, really free flowing and, and intuitive for the user to, to use. But in terms of the content on that landing page being dedicated to specific travellers, I think um, the companies, there are a lot of companies providing booking engines that are either, you know, a whole website or an add on to your existing website. Site. And they're the ones who they also do a lot of you know research and they have a lot of insights into whether you know specific landing pages should be tailored to different types of guests. So um, I wouldn't want to give a suggestion sure, there, but sure. I'd say that that's probably the people that you'd need to turn to to ask that. Okay, and um, I think Linda was going to fire in with one of our final questions before we wrap up. Linda. Yeah, thanks, Kev. Ali, do you think? Um we'll be having these same conversations around uh, hotels and getting to grips with data in, in two years' time, or, or do you think maybe things will have moved on? Um, I sure as heck hope that we're not having the same conversations in two years' time, mostly because I think my boss will be asking me questions about why I haven't spread the word more efficiently. <laughs> um, but, you know, realistically, I think that the hotel market is huge. Um, there are a lot of people to educate. There are a lot of people, you know, doing a really, really busy job and so it may take us that long to actually reach everyone and for everybody to sort of get up to speed. Um, certainly with technology I hope that people start getting on board with it more. Uh, there are some hotels that are leading the way and there are others that are still you know lagging behind that don't even have a website for their for their accommodation. So so you know we've got this 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 whole range. So realistically I think in two years time Hopefully we won't be having exactly the same discussion, but I think, you know, managing data and understanding it and, and you know, understanding the online space will still be a topic that some hoteliers are coming to grips with. Okay, and just a, just a final one for me on that kind of two-year thing. I mean, one of the, the hot topics at the moment is, um, you know, meta booking or instant booking. You're a, met, you know, you're a leading um, meta search engine. Do you see that being a trend that's going to grow or not? Uh, it's certainly a trend that is um, useful for independent hoteliers. So the purpose of our, our express booking um, scenario or, or using a, you know, booking engine provider is that, you know, it takes the, the guesswork out of it for the hotelier, as I said about, you know, the user functionality of that landing page and that website. Um, so that's the huge advantage. I think there, there will be a trend in that because simply put, you know, we know that the amount of, um, investment and resources and, and technical capability to for a hotelier to sit there in his hotel and create a website and build a landing page and a, and a booking engine that functions as well as something that a tech provider can can provide. Um, obviously the trend is going to go towards the tech provider because as far as I'm concerned that's a no-brainer you know it's about not trying to reinvent the wheel again make use of the solutions that are already out there that are doing that can do the job for you okay and um, this is the softball question that we did promise you so Adam is asking what is the name of the Travago guy and is he a nice guy to wrap us up 
do we know where Adam's from? I'm presuming he's from the United States. Well, I don't know. No. Our Travago guy there is really famous. His name is Tim. But if you happen to be, we actually just had a, a new Travago guy fairly recently um, hit the airwaves in India. And um, he's getting quite a lot of of attention online as well. So maybe it's him that you're talking about. And he's actually our very own Abhinav Kumar and he's our country developer for, for India here at Travago. So, so <laughs> um, he's, he's rocketed to fame with the new Travago guy ads. But otherwise, um, Tim is the name of the, the American Travago guy. And we do have a few other Travago guys in other markets that I, I don't know their names. So okay. um, if, if that one wants, if you really, if I haven't answered the question, <laughs> ask it again and say where you're from and I'll find out. Okay. <laughs> well, hopefully that, uh, to those tuning in, uh, hopefully that's not the, the best piece of insight that you've heard over the <laughs> course of the last 40 minutes. So um, we have taken a note of all the questions. Sorry, we don't have any more time. Uh, Ali and her team will happily um, uh, field those questions and get back to you personally as and when. Just to remind everybody that we have recorded everything, that everything that you saw in Ali's presentation will be up on tnews.com and that recording um, uh, this evening uh, UK time you'll also be emailed uh, a link to that um, when this closes down when we say goodbye there's going to be a quick question come up from Travago we'd hope you'd like to uh, uh, answer that and participate I think they'd be glad to hear from you and I think you'd probably be quite pleased with what they're offering as well so that only goes for me to say on behalf of tnews and Linda and I uh, thank you very much uh, to Ali and especially to Travago for taking part thanks Ali you're welcome and thanks everybody for joining us and I hope it's been helpful for you. Okay and uh, we do have another one uh, on a different subject matter with Travago coming up over the next couple of months so uh, stay tuned uh, uh, to tnews.com for information about that. Lots of people are saying thank you, thank you, thank you. That's great. So thank you very much to everybody for you're tuning welcome. in. So uh, enjoy the rest of your day or good night if you're uh, uh, far east of us here. So thanks ever so much everybody. Cheerio. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.